more of you in our life, more of you in our ministry, more of you in every area of our life, more of you in our life in this year, 2019. In Jesus' name. Just before I go into the message, I just want to sing a song of having more of the Lord. I want more of you. I want more of you. The more I know you, the more I want to know you. Jesus, I want more of you. I want more of you. I want more of you. The more I know you, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. More of you. More of you. I want more of you. That's my heart cry for 2019. I just want more of him. More of his wisdom. More of his knowledge. More of him in every way in my life. In every areas of my life. And so the uh, message, the title of the message for today is wisdom. Wisdom for everyday Kingdom living in 2019. Wisdom for every day. Kingdom living in 2019. Um, you know, over the, because it's the beginning of the year, over the last few uh, weeks, I've just been uh, meditating and the Lord has just been ministering to me just to ask for more, more wisdom. You know, we have so many. Uh, examples of those who have operated in wisdom of Elohim. We have so many examples. We had Stephen who was full of the Holy Ghost and was full of wisdom. We had Joshua, the son of Nun. The um, um, Bible recalls that he was full of wisdom. So what about Solomon? Solomon was a um, like, man of like passion who dared to ask for wisdom and the Lord gave him wisdom. And so during, you know, during the past few weeks when I've, since I've been meditating on wisdom, the Lord has dropped a few things in my heart that I would just like to share with you that I'm going to take on board for 2019 and I'm hoping that you will also take it on board for 2019 in Jesus' name. And the first one is, uh, thank you Angela for reading the scriptures. It's from James chapter 1 verse 5 and James chapter 3 verse 17. In James chapter 1, it tells us to ask for wisdom if anyone lacks. If you have some of it, if you have a little of it, you can ask for the fullness to walk in the fullness of wisdom of Elohim. And it tells us in James chapter 3 verse 17, describes the wisdom, not the wisdom of men. You know, it's wisdom that is pure peaceable, gentle, from above, not defiled, not of hypocrisy. And so I'll just take you through what, some of those things that the Lord has been laying, imp impressing in my spirit in the last few weeks. So number, the first one is um, to be intentional in applying the word of the Lord to our lives. So Joshua 1 chapter 8 says that the book, I know every one of us know it, but in this year 2019, let us be intentional about applying the word of the Lord in everyday areas of our lives. It says this book of the Lord shouldn't depart out of our mouth, but we should meditate on it day in and day, day and night to observe. That's the key thing. To observe, to do all that is written. It's not to observe, to teach all that is written. Is not to observe, to talk about all that is written, but it's to observe for you to do. And so that's my prayer for you, and that's the prayer for myself, that I will observe to do according to all that is written. Then I will, I will prosper. Then I will have good success. You know, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, allow the word of God to dwell richly in you in all wisdom. So as we're reading the word, we apply the word. We apply the word to every circumstance with wisdom, with discernment, with judgment, with insight. That is wisdom. Your manifestation comes in your application of the word of Elohim. The month of February has been declared the month of manifestation. 
But that manifestation comes only when you apply the word of Elohim. You know, application of the word of one's life is the same as wisdom. You want wisdom? Then apply. Apply the word that is written in your life. Do it. Do all that is written. You know, a lot of people say knowledge is power. Yes, it is power, but I don't believe all of that. I believe that the application of knowledge is power. The application of knowledge is wisdom. It's when you apply that knowledge that you have, that is wisdom. And that is power. Hallelujah. The next thing that, I, you know, that was dropped in my spirit as I was thinking about wisdom and asking the Lord for more of him. More of him in this 2019. I don't want to remain the same as I was in 2018. I want to get better because the scripture tells me that the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. I don't want to be the same that I was in 2018. I want to be better and bigger in Jesus' name. And I know that's your prayer and I pray the same for you this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. So Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 to 14 tells us to live in maturity alone. Live in maturity alone. This year is a year of the Holy Spirit. It's only the sons of the law of Elohim that are led by the Holy Spirit. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. He says, for when, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have the, that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And I become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskinful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. He says, but strong meat belongs to them that are full of age. Those are sons of Elohim. Those are mature people who by reason of use have their, ex their senses. So the, the word of the Lord excess allows us to have our, exercise, um, our senses exercised to distinguish between right and wrong, between the evil and righteous. May the Lord help us even to walk, to grow up, to become sons of Elohim. You know, it's only the sons of Elohim that will experience his manifestation. I pray that we will grow up and leave childish things alone. You know, we have been taught in this house and we should not reject knowledge. You know what it says in Isaiah 4 verse 6. It says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. But if you reject knowledge, I will reject you. That will not be our passion in Jesus' name. This house is a house that we've been given knowledge. We've been taught knowledge. Year 2019 is a time for you to start applying that knowledge. Please do not reject knowledge. Do not reject knowledge, please. Hallelujah. Number three. Avoid. These are the things that I wrote that I'm meditating for myself. So, and I believe that it will help you all too in Jesus' name. Avoid being a Sunday, Sunday medicine Christian this year. You've got to be intentional about this. Avoid being a Sunday, Sunday medicine Christian. I'll tell you what that means. You know, when I was in secondary school in Nigeria, every Sunday we had this medicine. It's an anti-malaria that we took every Sunday for the prevention of malaria. Everybody, Daraprin. Yes, that is called Daraprin. <laughs> it's called Sunday, Sunday medicine. So this year, let us be intentional about fellowshipping. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. It says, not forsaking the assembling of, of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Don't, for, uh, don't forsake the assembly of others, especially now that the day 
of the return of Yeshua is drawing near. We all know Jesus Christ is coming soon, isn't it? He says the fact that you know that Jesus Christ is coming soon. This is not the time to start drawing back and not come to church. Don't, you don't come for Bible, um, Thursday, um, you know, Bible school. If you're not coming to school, um, Bible school on Thursday, then you should be teaching somewhere. You shouldn't be at home. And don't say, oh, I'm going to watch on the internet. One day you won't watch. And before you know it, you're, you're drawn out. That would not be our portion in Jesus' name. You know, the kingdom of God suffered violent. And the violent must take it by force. You know, in 2014, I made up my mind. This has to be intentional. You've got to make up your mind and say, I'm not going to allow this. I'm not going to be a Sunday, Sunday medicine, a Christian. You've got to be intentional. The other one I was going to talk about, I to, I'm talking about is Proverbs 9 verse 10. It says, fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning. It's not the end. It's not the fullness. But if you want to know how to fear the Lord, if you want to walk in wisdom, let us fear the Lord. This year is the year of his Holy Spirit. Let us fear the Lord this year. The way we live our lives, our lifestyle, our behaviors, the way we reverence our leaders, those the Lord has put above us, do we reverence them or do we speak to them anyhow? If you fear the Lord, you would not do that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And James chapter 1 verse 5 says, ask for wisdom. So once you fear the Lord, that's the first step. The next step is then to ask for more. So that you can continue in that wisdom. If the Lord will not rebuke you for asking for more wisdom. The Lord will give liberally to you if, uh, if you ask by faith. You know, sometimes I wonder why we don't ask for wisdom. I, I'm including myself as well. Why don't I ask for wisdom a lot of the time that I should? Is it because I don't really understand the value of wisdom? And so earlier on this week, I just went through the Bible, was looking at wisdom, very powerful. You know, I'll give you some examples, but you can look at it yourself at home when you get home. It says, wisdom, ask wisdom to be your sister. Say, wisdom, be my sister. You know, when your wisdom is your sister sitting like Sushan and Yushan, it will nudge you when you're about to do something foolish. It will tell you to shut up and not to say that thing. It will tell you not to go that way because wisdom is your sister. So this year, 2019, I indulge all of you. I have asked wisdom to be my sister. So you too ask wisdom to be your sister or your brother. Wisdom to build. Wisdom to build. Do you find that you cannot build anything? Proverbs 14, 1, 24, 3 talks about a foolish woman uses, a, a foolish person uses their hands to destroy but it's wise that builds. This do not, does not apply to a house. It doesn't just apply to a home. But it applies to every area of your life. How are you building your spiritual life? Do you find that you're not able to build it together? Ask the Lord for wisdom. Are you working on a project that you're not able to build? Ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask the Lord for wisdom. He will not rebuke you for asking. Ask and shall be given unto you. You know, wisdom gives strength. Do you find a particular task too big, too huge for you to do? Ecclesiastes 7, 7, 19 says, it says, wisdom gives more strength than 10 mighty men in a city. Wisdom gives um, strength more than 10 mighty men who are ruling a city. That's the power of wisdom. And I um, indulge, encourage you all to walk in wisdom this year. The other, um, read the uh, point that was impressed on my heart. It says, it is wisdom to receive the rod of correction. It is wisdom to receive the rod of correction. You know, Proverbs 22, verse 15 says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far. You know, every time we don't walk as, as instructed by the Holy Spirit, you know, we are, we are, we are, we are childishness will set in, and a bit of foolishness will settle as well. 
every time you don't walk in line with the Holy Spirit, you're out of line, you don't walk as a son of Elohim, foolishness is bound to settle. Because then you start to do like a child, behave like a child. And saying the word of the Lord is that rod that comes via the study of the word, that comes via the pulpit, by your ministers of God. Since it's that word that will drive that foolishness away. You know, I went to a military secondary school. And in those days, um, when you behave foolishly, you get whipped. We had three sets of students, guys. Um, I'll use the boys as an example. When the rod is coming, you have those that would dodge it with their hands and run away, and the soldiers would run after them. And when we had those that would receive the rod of correction, and they would do their hands and shake it off in front of the teacher. And then we had those that would receive the rod and cry and weep and weep. And the Lord is saying this year, when the rod of correction is coming, please accept it. Don't dodge it. Don't shake it off. But let it receive it. If you have to weep, weep. If you have to cry, cry. Whatever you need to do, do it. Until my time is up. I just thank you, thank the Lord for this time. I've been able to share some of the things that the Lord has impressed upon my spirit. I pray the Lord will bless and keep you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Thank you so much, Pastor Kemi. That was powerful. That was really, really powerful. Wisdom is the principal thing. I pray that we have received wisdom today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I want us to sing this song, just one, one stanza. Um, the Lord, this is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I'm sure we know that song. Lord, this is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you praise all that I adore is in you Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone every breath that I take Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your ways in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your ways in me. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. This is our prayer, oh God, that we give you our hearts. We give you our souls. Have your way in us, Lord. Everything within us is to worship you, is to adore you. We give you praise, almighty God. Lord, may you continue to minister unto us as you have already started. By the same Holy Spirit, we are ready to hear from you. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to give God praise for an opportunity to minister to, to us today. I always say, as I minister to others, I have to be ministered to first by the same word. So I give God praise that he started ministering to me. And I, I pray that he was going to minister to us as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. The title of my message is The Indwelling Holy Spirit. The indwelling Holy Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. As we know that this is the year of the Holy Spirit. 
I've been trying to search more about this Holy Spirit, to know more about it, because this is the year of the Holy Spirit. It has been declared. And I've been searching through, you know, the scriptures, wanting to have that in-depth knowledge and, and uh, relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I've been asking Holy Spirit to teach me, to show me more about him, that I may walk in his ways. So I just pray that the Lord is going to help us to continue to seek him because we can only walk with him when we know about him. So as we know more about him, we'll be able to truly, truly, truly walk with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So what I've uh, learned to, to realize that um, for me to walk with the Holy Spirit, I need to relate with him as a person. As a person, as I relate with my, clo my friends, my close friends, this is how I ought to relate with the Holy Spirit so that I can hear him when he speaks, so that I can know him when he's saying something to me. So it's about that relationship, that intimate, close relationship with the Holy Spirit, which I'm seeking and which I believe we are also seeking. Because the Bible says those who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. So we want to be led by the Spirit, so we need to seek an intimate relationship with him. Hallelujah. So, um, because we know that the Holy Spirit is not the shaking, the laughing, the speaking in tongues. It's, it's so, so it's, those are the gifts which he gives unto us, but that's not him. Holy Spirit is God himself. So if he's God himself, let us look at him or relate with him as a person. Because we know that we can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can we quench the Holy Spirit. But I pray that the Holy Spirit... By his grace, he's going to teach us how to relate with him. Hallelujah. Uh, as I was continuing to try and understand more about the Holy Spirit, I was studying and the Lord was just ministering to me. And I came up with the word trust. Trust. T-U-R-S-T. And the Lord started to reveal to me how I can use that as an acronym in order to deepen my relationship with the Holy Spirit. So trust in the Holy Spirit T would stand for thanking him that he has decided to come and dwell in you. He could have dwelt in animals, birds, fish, anything else, but he chose to come and dwell in me, to dwell in you. And it's not every human being he dwells in. He does not dwell in unbelievers. He does not dwell in atheists. He does not dwell in the intellectuals. He dwells in the children of God. He dwells in you and me. So we need to thank him for that. Because he could have chosen anybody else, but he chose you and me, that you come and dwell in us. So that's something which we need to be grateful to God for, that you chose me, that you come and reside inside of me. Who am I? So what can I do? The only thing I can do is to want to know him, that you have come to live with me, just like someone comes and lives in your house. You get to know that person. You want to know that person, whether you can trust that person, whether you can really connect with that person, whether you can do things together with that person. So this is also how we need to seek to know the Holy Spirit, that we can relate with him at an in-depth level. Praise the Lord. So as I was looking at um, trust, so thank you, God, thanking Holy Spirit that has come to dwell with me. The arrow will repent, review, review your glory. When the Holy Spirit has come to live in us, we need to ask God, review your glory to me. Let me know. Let me see your glory. Let me understand you more and more. I'll go into all those uh, one by one. And then the you will be use me. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to use us. We are mere vessels. We are channels where he can express himself to touch lives around us. And as to be strengthened me, we cannot do it in our own strength. Without the Holy Spirit strengthening us, we faint along the way. But some of the assignments are really difficult. By the Holy Spirit, you can only do them, but not by it in your own strength. Then T will be teach me. You have to be taught. We can't do it ourselves. We need to be taught by the Holy Spirit so that you can be able to do what God has called us to do. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to go one by one to those um, the five letters which I have given you. So thanking him, we are saying turn inward and recognize the Holy Spirit's presence in you by simply saying thank you for coming to dwell inside of me. Because we know that the Bible says in First um, Peter 2 verse 9, it said, but you are a chosen race. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation. And the reason why God chose you is that he may show forth his glory. This is why he chose us, so that he may show forth and display the virtues and perfections of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. 
So he also says in um, John chapter 14, verse 15 to 17, says, If you really love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. The amplified says another counselor, another helper, another intercessor, another advocate, another strengthener, and another standby, that he may remain with you forever. Hallelujah. So he's going to be with us forever. He is going to come, not come in and out, but he's going to be with us forever. Verse 17 says, The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive or welcome or take to his heart because he does not see him or know or recognize him, but you know and recognize him. For he lives with you constantly and you will be in you. Hallelujah. This is so powerful and this is wonderful that he is going to be with us constantly. Because we know him, we recognize him, we know that the Holy Spirit is in me. And when it gives us instructions, we know him because of that intimate relationship with him. That you can know that this is the Holy Spirit talking. This is my mind, but this is the Holy Spirit talking. And we respond to whatever he is saying to us. Because he is constantly living within us. Hallelujah. So if you look at other, um, I was looking at the other attributes of the Holy Spirit. He says he is our advocate. When you need an advocate to speak on your behalf, he is there. When you need somebody to talk on your behalf, he is your advocate who is going to speak on your behalf to defend you. He even you know, stand for you when you are not even there. It could be in a workplace where things are happening. When you are not even there, someone will rise up and stand for you. Because the Holy Spirit, who is our advocate, will raise up someone to speak on your behalf so that you will be acquitted. So that people will know that you are not the one who did that thing. You are not the one who said those things. That's our advocate. And also says he's our comforter. When you feel hopeless, when you feel down, he is there as our comforter. He will comfort us. There are times where you feel like screaming, but the Holy Spirit will comfort you. He is there to comfort us. He is there to help us. He's our helper. When we need help, when we think, you know, who is going to help us, he who comes in and he helps us because he is our helper. Hallelujah. And he is our intercessor when we don't know what to pray. See, the Bible says we don't know what to pray, but he, the Holy Spirit, will make intercessions for us with groanings and utterance which cannot be uttered because he knows the mind of Christ. He he prays the will of God upon our lives. So we pray that the Lord will help us that when we know these advocates, these attributes of the Holy Spirit, we can rest in him. What else would you want? Who else can provide all these things for us apart from the Holy Spirit himself? So by him in dwelling with us, we have all what it takes. We have all what we need. So when I was looking at this, I Lord, I said, Lord, I know that I have all what it takes. I have no lack. I have everything which, means, which makes me to succeed in life. Like Pastor Kemi was talking about wisdom. When we know that the Holy Spirit is in us, we have everything. The wisdom, we can tap from him because he indwells in our spirit. And we have all what it takes to be successful. You don't need to look elsewhere. If you need uh, an intercessor, yes, you have got intercessors in the house. But the Holy Spirit is your great intercessor. He is going to intercede on your behalf. He is our great comforter. He is our great advocate. You can have advocates, yes, but he is the great advocate in our lives. And when we have him, we know that our lives are safe and secure in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And the more we seek to acknowledge him, the more he reveals himself to us and become evident in our day-to-day lives. The more we acknowledge that he is in us, he reveals to us more and more. And we become, you know, his his presence becomes evident in our day-to-day lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then um, number two, arrow is release revelation of your glory. When we ask the Holy Spirit to release the revelation of the realms of God's glory and heart, he will reveal to us. We need to ask him. Lord, Moses said in Exodus 33, verse 14 to 18, show me your glory. He asked God, show me your glory, because he was so desperate. He wanted to know more about God. And he said, Lord, show me your glory. We can ask for more. We can ask. Uh, for God to uh, give us that encounters of the realm of God's glory and he can use it, he can do it by his his spirit, hallelujah Uh, Exodus uh, 33 and the Lord said my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest and Moses said to the Lord if your presence does not go with me do not carry us up from here 
For by what shall it be known that I and your people have found favor in your sight? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinguished? That's what really struck me. To say so that we are distinguished. What is it that distinguishes us from the rest of the people? We need to be distinguished. And Moses is saying, what is it that is going to distinguish us from you, from us, from the rest of the people? And the Lord said, I will do this thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in loving kindness and mercy in my sight. And I know you personally by name. Hallelujah. So the Lord is asking or is seeking for us to have that kind of relationship. Moses was asking, what is going to distinguish us from the rest of the people? That is my prayer today, and I pray that the Lord will also help you to say, what is going to distinguish you from the rest of the people? In that workplace, what is going to make you stand out from the rest of the people so that you can be different from the rest of the people? And it's, it's the presence of the Holy Spirit. That is what is going to distinguish you from the rest of the people in that particular place where you are. And the Lord is saying to Moses, I know you by name. Does the Lord know us by name? Does he know us to those extent that he knows us personally by name like he knew Moses? And I was saying, Lord, by your spirit we will know you. By your spirit is going to enable us to know him just as he knew, he knew Moses. Hallelujah. And then Moses said, I beseech you, show me your glory. And the Lord said, you know, you, no man can see me and live, but he can show you my um." My, my glory from behind and that was what was revealed to Moses but by the spirit the Lord is going to reveal himself to us he is going to reveal all what he is to us if we continue to seek him he is willing to reveal himself to us depending on how much we seek him depending on how much you are willing to spend time with him how much you are willing to build that relationship with him which will make him be able to reveal these things to us hallelujah so as God promised to go with Moses because he knew him by name, he is also willing to go with us and to show us loving kindness and show us mercy. And we will be granted those things if you ask him because we want to know him personally. He will know him by the spirit. And we want to be distinguished among people as people who are filled by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And John 14, 23 said, but when, when the time comes, you will ask nothing of me. You will need to ask me no questions. I assure you most solemnly. I tell you that my father will grant you whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that I am. Up to this time, you have not asked a single thing in my name, all that I am, but ask and you shall be... Um, now ask and keep on asking and you receive so that your joy may be full and complete hallelujah the lord wants us to have a complete joy he wants to have complete he wants us to have complete joy in him and he's saying ask in that day you have not asked but now ask because now we have received the holy spirit so when we are asking as empowered by the holy spirit he said i will give you whatever you're asking for so that your joy may be full but it depends on what what we are asking are we going to be asking for more money bigger houses bigger cars it depends on what we are asking if you're asking for souls he said i'll give you so that your joy may be full i was i was just made it to say you know what if you are if you like um, um prophet nad was sharing that testimony the joy which is in his heart is more than money it's more than a check coming through the post it, the joy is something different you can see the audience was testifying he was bubbling with joy because of that encounter so i want to encourage us to say what well, that's the kind of joy the lord is asking if you ask in, in anything in my name i will give you so that your joy may be full our joy will be full only when we do the will of god our joy will be full only when we go out for souls only when we go out to encourage to build up someone and when we do that the joy which comes in our spirit supersedes the joy of the things of this world and this is what we are asking god to help us by his spirit to have this to have the passion for souls to have those things which which god desires so that we may be led by the spirit to do those things we can share a simple message with someone but that message will pierce that heart of that person and that person's you know, countenance will change but you don't even realize that you have done something so great but that alone will make you give you so much joy to say i've touched someone's life i've been used by god to touch and change somebody's life hallelujah so that should be our prayer in jesus name amen then you is use me paul exhorted us to diligently seek to be used by god in the gifts of the holy spirit first corinthians 12 30, 31 but earnestly desire zealously cultivate this greatest 
uh, the best gifts and graces, and yet I will show you a better way um, of them all. The Spirit will use us more if we ask Him to. He asking uh, Paul is encouraging us to earnestly desire to be used by God. It has to be the desire for you to be used by God because He can't force you to go and do things for Him. We have to have that desire, and we have that desire. The Holy Spirit will enable us by the grace of God to start do the work He has given us through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There is the enabling gifts which enables us to do the work of God. But we have to have the passion. We have to have the desire for the Lord to use us. If we don't have the desire. He will not force us to go and do those things. We have to have the passion and desire. Hallelujah. Uh, if you come to a point where you want others to see and feel and understand what you are experiencing and they can't get it. You know, when you are filled with some revelation, some truth which we receive here, have you got to a point whereby you want to give that to some other people? And they are not getting it, or they are not receiving, or they are not at the level where you are. If you come to that point, I have come to that point, I get, how can they not want to receive this truth? How can they not want to be, you know, enjoying what we are enjoying? And just think, I don't know, but I come to that point whereby, can you not, you know, enjoy what I'm enjoying? Can you not want to share, you know, the things which God has revealed? And it's just something which we just think, Lord, may you help our people to understand and to receive. Because you'd see that you can notice that there are some bondages in their lives, but they still want to hold on to those things, and they are refusing to let go of those lies which they believe in, so that they can receive the truth to set them free. But I believe the Lord will help us. Because yesterday we were being encouraged in the open gates by apostles to say, use social media and share the glory and revelation of God with the lost in the dying world. Okay, they may not want to listen to you, but you can use other means. We can use other means to reach out. Maybe one person will listen. Maybe one less person will be edified. So let us not lose heart. Even if people around us may not be willing to hear the bones of the word of God, let us use social media and just allow the spirit of God to reveal and um, bless uh, the God's people. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, Pastor Jeremiah also was challenging us to say, let us not have a cold heart. Let us have a heart which is able to see the needs around us so that we may be able to save him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Then lastly, strengthen us. The Lord will strengthen us. The Spirit will touch our minds, our emotions, and our speech so that we may be empowered to do the will of God. Because the Spirit which live in us will give us the, fr the fruits of the Spirit. Because the desires of the flesh always find the desires of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 23 uh, tells us about the fruits of the Spirit. That when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, they, they will strengthen us. We will be manifesting those gifts. Peace, love, joy, faithfulness, long-suffering, all those things will strengthen us in times of need. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless us and may the Lord continue to use us. And lastly, may the Lord teach us. Ask the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom in every area of our lives. He will teach us. He said he will teach you all things. First John, um, John 14 says, but he will send you, he will teach you all things and he will cause you to recall all those things which I have told you. So we need the Holy Spirit to teach us. He is our best teacher. And there is no excuse for missing it because the Lord is already ready to teach us and encompass us through his loving kindness. Psalm 32a says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eyes upon you. So may the Lord teach us, guide us, and reveal himself to us. So trust, teach Teach, uh, teach, uh, may the Lord teach us. May the Lord continue to help us to understand him. May he reveal himself to us. May he show forth his glory through us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.